All right, so we are on to the top five, but my top five budget picks, I should say, for an Estrada Crimson Vow. This is the second video in my set review for that, and next week we are doing the uh, bundle opening. Okay, I do like the creepy art they got in this set, but yeah. Please hit like and subscribe. It makes a really big difference. I, I do appreciate all the feedback and stuff like that. I get a lot of, like, mostly positive comments these days, so that's quite nice. Once again, we're talking about my top five budget picks. Um, so yeah. Before the bundle opening, I always like to, like, take a look back at the sets. And this one actually has a good amount of value left. Um, this top five was maybe not super impressive, but... I think there's a good number of cards still worth having in the set, yeah. And once again, my values are from MTG Goldfish, not a sponsor, not at all, no. Okay, dig up for one green, this is a sorcery. Um, it has cleave. Cleave is a mechanic where basically if you pay this other cost, this alternate cost, you get to ignore a bunch of text. So yeah, if you pay one green, it says, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Okay, so you're going and getting a basic land for one green. Pretty standard effect. I think it's a nice thing to have in just about any deck, because you don't want to miss your land drops. I think people always want to be like, ramp, ramp, ramp. It's like, if you miss your land drop, you're not ramping. You're just paying for land drops, okay? Anyway, I say that too much, maybe. Or you can pay the cleave cost, one black, black, green. So this is expensive, right? Four mana for a uh, for a tutor is expensive, but there's options. Options are very good to have. Search your library for a card. Put it into your hand, then shuffle. So this is just any card then. If you pay the four, it's any card. Pay one, go get a basic land, whatever basic land you want. So yeah, 50 cents only. Hmm. Alright. Oh, my stomach, every time I start recording, my stomach is just, just to be, uh, bad. Not great. Anyway, yeah. I'm avoiding using words that I shouldn't use. Uh, for one white, it is a one, two. Already not bad. But yeah, it has training also. So whenever this creature attacks with another creature with greater power, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. That's nice because it is an attack trigger, right? As soon as you attack, if there's another creature that has higher t uh, power or toughness, he's getting a plus one, plus one. So yeah, they, they, you don't have to wait until after combat to do that or something. Like he might already be out. This is going to make him stronger immediately. All right, for two and a white, this is the good part. Remove two plus one plus one counters from among creatures you control. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Whoa. Okay, three mana for removal is maybe not great, but usually it's two mana and a card, not just like an ability repeatable three mana. You do have to remove two plus one plus one counters. That's another cost, but it's really not hard to do. If you've got a good number, even tokens, and like proliferate, you probably got more than enough to make it worth paying the mana and the 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters to just keep taking out stuff on their board. Um, you can really take over the game with that. Anyway, one dollar, he's down. Mana form Hellkite, I think this is a great one. I posted on the Budget Magic Group and people had mixed reviews, which I think is fair, but yeah. I do like this. Uh, two red red for a flying 4-4. Four, four. Great start, right? 4-4 four, four flyer for 4? Can't complain. Um, whenever you uh, cast a non-creature spell, create an XX red dragon illusion creature token with flying in haste. Where X is the amount of mana spent to cast that spell? Whenever you cast a non-creature spell. I thought Jeskai right away, because Jeskai loves his non-creature spells. But people right away were like, well, actually, this is probably better with like a storm deck or something like that. And that's correct. Yeah. Storm deck would be crazy with this. Anyway. Exile that token at the beginning of the next end step. So this is going to make a whole bunch of like dragon illusions that can be whatever 
whatever the casting cost of the spell is. And yeah, even like, I feel like a lot of Grixis decks could like this as well. Um, I, I still think Jeskai number one in my mind, but whatever. Anyway, um, a Jeskai Storm deck, there, there's the answer right there. You can put those things together. So anyway, 186, Path of Peril. All right, so one black, black for this sorcery. It's a board wipe. I really like this one. Destroy all creatures with mana value two or less. I really want it for that effect. If you're not playing a token deck, you want this to take out the token deck, to counter the token deck, right? Having a good number of creatures that are like mana value three or more, not that hard to do. If anything, it's easier to do it that way than it is to keep them lower, um, I think. And, but yeah, you can also cast it first cleave for white black. Six for a board wipe is too much, I, but it's an option. Destroy all creatures then. Just destroys everything. So you can use it to just blow up everything for six, which is too much, I agree. But the main option, get rid of all those tokens, all those little things, all those like cheaper a lot of times even mana dorks will be like lower cost things i also like that cares about the cost of them so if someone's throwing a bunch of plus one plus one counters on them or something like that the they still get taken out because their mana value doesn't change right a lot of those like pump decks will try to use that to their advantage and this counters them as well so yeah anyway 125 cheaper even Edgar, Charmed Groom. I really like this. I think it's a a basic card, sure, but it is good for what it does. Uh, one of my students actually has a vampire deck, and he has this in his vampire deck. Uh, anyway, um, two white black for a 4-4. Four, four. Good start. Other vampires you control get plus one, plus one. Just an anthem for vampires. You know what? Hey, good stuff. Vampires is very strong, right? very very strong tribal or uh, kindred i should say sorry i'm old anyway um yeah and if he gets destroyed or he dies in some way he just flips over as a commander that's kind of awesome because they have to exile him or even in the 99 they really have to exile him to get him off the board um otherwise he's just sticking around okay so, it, when he flips over, Edgar Markov's Coffin. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 black and white vampire creature token with lifelink. So, this is going to, yeah, just start pumping out tokens. So, if he gets destroyed, you get vampire tokens, which he's just going to come back in, like, three turns or faster with proliferate. And then you're going to, like, make those even stronger. You're going to make them two twos as well as all your other vampires. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, and put a bloodline counter on Edgar Markov's coffin. So again, at the beginning of your upkeep, right? So uh, right at the start of your turn, you're gonna put one of these counters on and make a token creature. And then, yeah, you can proliferate off of that. You only need three, and then at the beginning of the next upkeep, he'll change back. So it's very easy to abuse that. Anyway, yeah, if there are three of those counters, um, remove remove them and transform it. So yeah, he's going to just come straight back to the battlefield. Um, at worst, in three turns. And while he's not on the battlefield, he's making tokens for you. Two dollars. So yeah, this is my top five budget picks. Uh, thank you and take it easy.